Right, welcome to another short video on the topic of graphing. And in this one we're going to look at finding the, the constant that you use to determine just how uh, broad or shallow a, a curve is. Uh, so if it's a parabola, we'll get those ones, or if it's a cubic, it may look something like this. But uh, there's a constant number that goes before the x squared or the x cubed term that determines the steepness or the shallowness uh, of our curves. And we're going to look at how to find that number. So we'll start by looking at parabolas and we'll look at two types of parabolas. One's in vertex form and one's in intercept form. So take a quick example um, of vertex form. So there's a parabola. We're given the, the picture. It looks like this. Uh, I stress that none of this is to scale. And we're told the vertex is the point 77. And we're given another point on the parabola which we need. And that's the point 811. So uh, because it's in vertex form, we can write straight away that the format of the parabola is going to look like this. Now, if you don't know how I got that, you're watching the wrong video. I have to assume you know why I wrote that down. Okay, so now we have to find the value k because this value here tells us uh, how steep or how shallow the parabola is. It is very tempting just to presume that it must be 1, but we must prove what the value k is and we cannot just assume it's 1. But that's okay because we can do that because we'll use this value here uh, to do the calculation. We simply replace x and y in our equation with 8 and 11. So 11 equals some number k uh, and x is actually 8 minus 7 squared plus 7. Uh, so 11, uh, 8 minus 7 is 1 squared is just 1 equals k plus 7. So k must equal 4. And then we can put that back into our original equation. And there we go. Oh, your pardon. Uh, 4 is our value of k. x minus 7 all squared plus 7. That is the full equation of that parabola. Let's take a look now at a parabola in intercept form. Uh, so it looks like this. And again, I stress this is not to scale. And you'll see why in a minute. Because uh, this value here is negative 5, this one here is 7, this one down here is actually negative 70. Uh, so uh, we can write that. Uh, we don't know what k is, but we know we can write x plus 5, x minus 7. And once again, if you don't know why I'm writing that like that, then you're watching the wrong video. So I can substitute that in, I get negative 70 equals k. In this occasion we were on the uh, we're on the x axis here. So x must equal zero. So zero plus five times zero minus seven. Uh, so negative seventy equals negative thirty five k which works out nicely as k equals two. And so I can put that into my uh, original expression. This time I know what k is k is 2 and that there must be my parabola. So let's extend it, just take that last example and extend it to a, a cubic. So if we've got a cubic that looks a bit like this, uh, what are we going with? Something like that. Uh, so we've got negative 5, 7, and 10, Not very clear, 10, and so we can write the cubic uh, in the form y equals some constant k, x plus 5, x minus 7, x minus 10, 
Uh, and again, if you don't know where I got that from, sorry, you're watching the wrong video. So let me do. So we're given an extra point here. Um, I'm given the point uh, eight fifty two. Eight fifty two. Uh, and when we uh, replace that, we get uh, 52 equals some number k, and it's 8 plus 5, 8 minus 7, uh, 8 minus 10. No. 10. So I get 52 equals k times 13 times uh, 1, times negative 2. So minus 26k equals 52. So k equals negative 2. And then we drop that back into our expression and we get y equals negative 2. x plus 5 x minus 7, x minus 10. So we cannot assume that this constant k is going to be 1. We have to take a known value from somewhere else on the cubic and replace it into the expression.